Christendom in Nigeria can sufficiently boast of proven men of integrity, upright, holy and influential who like Elijah of old have not bowed their knees to bars in this generation. God always at every point in history reserve a remnant for himself who will bear up the blazing torch of righteousness. One of such men is the vision bearer of Glory Christian Ministries in Lagos, Pastor Irofa Solomon James, who from a very humble background was chosen by God to raise champions for his kingdom on earth. This is Brass Island, in the creeks of the oil-rich Bayelsa state of Nigeria. Brass Island is comprised of three major towns, namely Tuan, Ewoma, and Okwoma Brass. This microcosm of the nation's entity is a significant territory of the proverbial goose that lays the golden egg. It is home to major oil and gas exploration facilities of the federal government, yet cannot boast of appreciable development. On the 21st of September 1958, here in Iwama Brass, a resident of greatness, Irofa, was born to the family of Pa Alanemi and Madame Aboroboye James Kereku, both of blessed memory. The seventh child and the first male in the family of eight, Irofa grew up through hardship and deprivation that even today is associated with Niger Delta region. But with God's guidance, defiant resolution and determination to succeed, he crossed the hurdles of elementary education at Ewoma Primary School and St. Barnabas Primary School to Umbras. He moved on to National High School, Nimbe, graduated in flying colors and worked as a teacher at the government secondary school to Umbras to raise funds for his tertiary education. Not deterred by his parents' inability to foot the bill for tertiary education, the young man proceeded to River State University of Science and Technology, Port Harcourt, where he studied and graduated as a land surveyor in 1984. Earlier on as an undergraduate, Eurofa James, against all odds, had surrendered his life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in one of the campus crusades of Rev. Dr. O. Ezekiel of Christian Pentecostal Mission, CPM. The experience welled up an insatiable hunger and desire for more of God in him. Little wonder, therefore, when in 1984, while serving as a youth copper at a government school in Agbo, in the then Bender State, the divine hand of Jehovah pulled and laid upon him the burden for ministry which will be fulfilled in the ever busy city of Lagos. Ever heard of a man cutting a deal with God? After much struggle, he accepted the call of ministry on the condition that God would take care of his parents' incessant illness, stemming from lack of care and resources to enjoy and live a good life. Young Girifai, in obedience to divine bidding, landed in Urile Gomo, Lagos, on Tuesday, 30th August 1985, not knowing anyone in the city, but being prepared by the mighty hand of Jehovah, found residence at number 19 Alagba Street, where he lived and carried out heaven's mandate of full-time ministry until 1987 when he moved to Suliri. 18th April 1987, he got married to beautiful Faith James, then Angela Nwokocha, and together on the 8th of March 1992, the vision for Glory Christian Ministries was birthed. Their marriage is blessed with three lovely children, Grace, Glory, and Irofa Jr. This man for over three decades has impacted positively on people from all corners of the globe with a profound message of practical and responsible Christianity, borrowing a leaf from the spotless life of the Lord Jesus. 
While many people in his native community accepted the toga of victims of circumstances and floated downstream to mediocrity, Pastor James paddled upstream against the prevailing current to reach the peak of his God's given destiny. He has lived true to his name, Irofa, which means there will be no end to his fame. Rising from the backwaters of Bayelsa, to ministering the word of God in some of the world's famous cities. Many waters have gone under the bridge. That young man of yesterday has now attained the milestone age of the elderly. As a pastor, what does this portend? The responsibility probably is to start behaving. People expect you to be, start behaving as an elderly person it, that is tough for me because I don't feel it. I certainly don't feel like 60. Now let's have an up and close picture of this humble servant of God celebrating 60 glorious years of impact. In these days of perversion and corruption of the truth, particularly about marriage, Pastor James T. holds up the divine order of a man and a woman coming together to form a family. To this end, he has stayed true to the marital vows made to faith 31 years ago. PJ, or Baba, as is fondly called by church members, is an uncompromising preacher and teacher of the Bible who does not colorize the interpretation with personal understanding but delivers it just as it is. Pastor James is an unreserved worshipper who would give anything to be wrapped up in God's loving arms in ecstatic worship. A man of faith who believes that God cannot promise it if he will not give it. His favorite declaration of faith is, I'll rather die believing. If God has promised, he is also able to. Now thank God it is not you that is promising. If you promise yourself something, it, you have to struggle to make it come, come to pass. But since it was God that promised it, leave it for him. He knows how to do it. Our man of God believes also in diligence. There is no room for laziness and lazity around him. Dressing the word to Pastor James is tantamount to hypocrisy. He is damn blunt and straight to the point. Most of you, I, I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to be blank and blunt. Most of you are carnal. You don't even know... For some of you, I cannot, even as your pastor, I cannot guarantee whether you are born again. Because I look at your life and you are shallow, you are worldly, you are carnal. If it is time to dress uniform, you will buy it. But when we come to church, when we have time for praying, nobody can see you pray. And you may want to call him old school. But his love for hymnals and all-time Christianity songs from back in the days is unparalleled. There is with God's own heart. This charismatic and dogged teacher also possesses the ego eye. Keen attention to details explain his knack for excellence in all things. You can't survive around him by carrying out assignments shabbily. Punctuality is pastor's watchword. You will never catch him coming late to a meeting. Some of you cannot understand this in your own opinion misplaced passion with which i'm speaking but this is me this is who i am maybe that's the reason why he called me not you who knows from the day i gave my life to christ i've never been late to anything at times uh, if we are going to somewhere to minister i mean when there is traffic on the way and he find out he's going to get there late he will come down and take a bike to get there so that he will meet up with that time I recall very clearly in 1997, thereabouts, during our annual convention, I and some of the people in my department, the TV department, failed to show up early for the morning session. And so Pastor waited till the end of the program and then called us and picked up a cane and flogged everybody. Uh, unknown to us, there were journalists around who documented the event and then the next day, we saw on headlines in the papers, Pastor Flog members. So that tells you punctuality for Pastor James is key. 
having the responsibility over the years to take crucial ministry and personal decisions. Are there regrets? Things he would have done differently? Oh yes, everybody have regrets whether they want to accept it or not. Everybody has regrets at the time. That's life. The beauty of the life is in realizing the fact that it is not only your good points that make up your life. A life is made up of both the high and the low points and um, everything in between. Okay, guys. Brace up yourself because we are going up closer. Cleanliness, they say, is next to godliness. PJ is only at home in a very clean environment. In his home, he walks around barefooted because he's sure not going to pick a grain of sand with his feet. Why many people will want to see the latest Hollywood and Nollywood movies? Pastor James derives his viewing pleasure from football and cartoons on TV. Did I just hear you say men of God are not football fans? Where our own PJ, though not a fanatical fan, is an ardent follower of FC Barcelona, Baca of Spain. For as long as that team is winning, he is part of that team. Up United! And if you are a follower like me of the best team in the world, up Barcelona. As a shepherd is always connected with the flocks, so is Pastor James bonded to the people of his spiritual tribe. Praying for and counseling them at every available chance. Now, it is said that when you want to really know a man, ask his wife or those who watch over him in his vulnerable years. Who really is Pastor James? To us in the family, he's a caring, loving, good-hearted person that is touched by what people go through. It hurts him to see that those under his uh, um, uh, pastorage are going through pain and he can't address it. He, he's, it's like he's not been able to reach out to them. So he's, he, he lo and he loves God with a passion. If he's doing the work of God, he better not stand on his way. What brings joy, what brings fulfillment in his life is God first before any other thing. Do you ever go to Baba Dao? Darling, my regim. So, Oda Oya na ru, Oda Oya na mo ya na boy. Eh, kame to go to Ivy Lake, but Lulu ever go to Baba Lulu? Many ministers of the gospel are successful in the work of the ministry, but are failures in the family front. My dad is a family-oriented man. He would rather see us, his family, succeed, even if it cost him his free time and countless hours working and he would work hard to benefit us rather than to benefit himself. My dad is a man who lives what he preaches. He is the same man you see on the pulpit is, this, is the same man at home. He loves his family. He sacrifices countlessly for his family and um, growing up I've never felt like he has put anything else ahead of God and ahead of his family. And I've never felt like he was not somebody I could go to, somebody I could turn to um, for guidance, for encouragement, for support. And he is most certainly the Christ embodiment, the embodiment of Christ's love for the church. An adage in a local parlance says, however straight a man walks, the head would definitely shake. However holy and righteous you are, there will always be some gray areas in everyone's life. He used to be quick in getting angry. But I observe that as the years are going by, he's working on it and he does not quickly get angry anymore. Yes, it's somebody who is very frank and want to say it as it is. But at times, some of the frankness might hot people. So my advice is that at this stage you should consider and think over what he wants to say and how he says it to still pass the message. Life is full of events. Some we like to recall, 
why others will rather deposit in the safe coffers of the past. Unforgettable events in my life. Obviously, when I got married to my wife, when our daughter was born, and most importantly, recently, was when Glory Christian Ministry started. Oh, I remember that the excitement was beyond. Though crafted on the outside with a hard disposition, our father in the Gloryland family has one of the softest hearts in the world. I've seen different faces of pastor, but he's been consistent, been a man of integrity. He looks tough on the altar, but if you really got to know him, he's a very soft person, lovable person. And pastor, on this occasion of your 60th birthday, I wish you a happy birthday. And you look great at 60. When I grow up to be 60, I want to be just like you. Feet trim, handsome. Bless you, sir. A Libra, cheerful giver, holding nothing back in order to be a blessing to others. Now, young people, Proverbs 19.20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. My advice for the young ones will be, please, 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 listen to those who are older when they are telling you, correcting you, teaching you things. It is only when you reach this age that you look back in, sorry, in regret most of the time why you had not listened. You know, because there are, uh, there are things that people at this age know, experienced, and can tell you that can make you a better person, live a better life, and reach your life better than the person who is speaking to you. On this special occasion, many people express their heartfelt wishes and prayers for him. Pastor, I've known you for the last 24 years. You've been there for me when I was troubled. You've talked to me. You have prayed with me. I really love you and I appreciate you. Happy birthday. Have a wonderful 60th birthday. God bless you. I just wish Pastor fulfillment in ministry and in life. And I pray that God will reward him for how he has painfully labored over people. He's sound. God is not very knowledgeable and I cannot um, get enough of Pastor James every Sunday. I just pray that God will prosper his family, keep him and them. Happy birthday, Pastor James. Happy birthday, Pastor! Amidst all of these felicitations, one wonders what the next phase of life is for Pastor James. I think for everybody, when you come to this phase of your life, what matters is um, the legacies you leave behind, how you would like to be remembered. And I pray that um, I will be able to uh, focus my attention uh, on those and only those things. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you an erudite Bible scholar, a pastor, life coach, teacher, and preacher par excellence, the angel of the church here in Gloryland, the founding pastor and serving overseer of this great ministry, our father in the Lord, Dr. Irofa Solomon James. Happy 60th birthday anniversary, sir.